John, some good news to come from the Bradford Bulls. They've re-signed Joe Brown on a, an 18-month deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Wigan were good enough to release him when we inquired about him. Uh, he's been playing at London Scholars pretty regularly over the last half dozen games, scoring a try a game. And it was while we were monitoring John Magrin, who was obviously on loan down there, that it sort of caught my eye. Uh, and obviously when he inquired into his background, he'd been at the Bulls. And uh, unfortunately when they'd gone into administration, that's when he left to go to Wigan, as Jake Truman did to go to Castleford. Didn't quite work out as well for him, but his potential's there for all to see. The Bradford fans will know that was watched the young age groups and also he played for England Academy. So in all honesty, he's a great recruit. Uh, to cover fullback, wing, or centre, and he, he almost perfectly fits fits the bill. He's, he's young, uh, and he's another homegrown Bradford player. Very much so, and that was another reason that really appealed to us. You know that we had three players who were looking at in depth, and obviously that was one of the factors that uh, we decided to plump for Joe. And I'm delighted that he's here, and I, you know, congratulations to him, and I welcome him on board. But now it's time to prove how he's matured as a player and hopefully surrender place in our first team. We've just seen him training outside at Tong. Is he in contention for Sunday's game against Featherstone? Yes, as long as we get approval from the RFL, we've lodged all the paperwork and uh, you know we'll have a look and, and see if that gets approved. If that gets approved, that will be a factor that we consider when we're selecting the, the 17 for Featherstone. And obviously it's another big game. On Sunday, Post Office Road, Featherstone, another top five playoff rival. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Featherstone came up with the uh, performance of the of the summer bash. I thought they were exceptional in that game against York. You know, they were they were tough. They carried the ball very well forward. It allowed the halfbacks to play really well behind them, and they finished well on the edges. So they're a very good team. There's no doubt about that. And yes, they will be a rival for the top five. And obviously that makes it a real important game for us. And they may well feel they always won or two with the banner of our earlier victories against them. You know, both one point wins uh, at Odsall. Do you expect it to be just as close on Sunday? Yeah, I do. I think it'll be a very close game. Yeah, I, I do. And uh, obviously with to factor in as well, it might be, you know, raining a little. That's been the day that's been forecast over the bank holiday weekend to be a bit iffy so that will have to be factored in as well when we're selecting the side and deciding which tactics to use. Have you got any team news ahead of the game? Obviously you just mentioned Joe Brown could potentially make his debut. Not really because uh, you know we kept some players off the feet on, on Tuesday to look after them uh, so tonight when they're back out their full training that's when we'll really assess them, see if there's any uh, you know, hindrance to the movement patterns with the soreness, uh, etc. So tonight's really the night when we really do look at them in depth. I, I know they've done a, a skill session out there now, but tonight's the one when they really go 13 on 13, and that's when we'll finally decide on the makeup of the team. You mentioned after the Halifax game, John, that you might have you know, looked at it a bit different and made a couple more changes, but you've now had an extra day off, so eight days to get everybody refreshed. Oh, it's been marvellous. Uh, you know, Tuesday's session was tremendous. It was very sp Featherson specific as well, uh, because obviously we've played them before. We feel as if we've got a bit of a handle about how they play, although the two new halfbacks obviously throw a bit of a spanner in the works there. But, uh, you know, w we feel we've got a good idea what they'll throw at us, and we made it very Featherson specific on Tuesday. So I do feel as if we've made full use of the eight day turnaround, and obviously it will should benefit us by us being energised and enthusiastic for that uh, 80 minutes. Well, obviously, you mentioned that the Featherstone House Dangers of Tom Holmes Dane, you know very well from his time here at the Bulls. I know Tom really well as well. I mean, you know, he came through the cast system and. Uh, he went to Featherston and I mean when we're at Wakefield we tried to sign him at Wakefield to get him there as, as our third half uh, so he's a real good player and obviously Dane Chisholm was sensational in that game against uh, York and, and credit to him and credit to the team as well and we know that, we're, that he and they will challenge us. In terms of long term injuries John, what's the current update on George Flanagan, Jai Hitchcock, uh, Reese Evans? Joe Keys and Ashley Gibson, I think I've just mentioned them. Yeah, I think you have, yes. So there's, there's still a fair list, isn't there? Which, you know, is why we've got to applaud the lads who are turning out week in, week out for, for putting us in the position we're in at the minute. Uh, George Flanagan's had his pins out of his thumb. It was 10 days ago, so in all honesty, 
he should be pushing. He's got his uh, his flexibility back in his wrist, his thumb. So uh, he should be pushing for this weekend. Uh, Jai's is early to mid uh, July. Reese is late July. So you know they're still long-term injuries. And Ash Gibson, we're hoping he should be available for the 1895 Cup game when we play at Barrow. So yeah, we're getting them back. And, and Joe's obviously still being monitored. So. It's you know the injury list is getting slightly smaller, but whenever you get one one back, you, we tend to lose one. So uh, you know we're we're just happy to plow on with what we've got, knowing we've got a good squad, uh, a big squad, but a quality squad as well. How do you approach John the, the next couple of games? Obviously Featherstone, you're taking one game at a time, but on the horizon you've got a midweek game against Barrow, then you've got the the Challenge Cup. Is it a case of prioritising any? No, I mean basically what we've done is we've focused solely on Featherstone, and uh, we, we've sort of said we don't want to talk about the Halifax game afterwards because you know although it's a very it's a big game with a, a great prize at the end of it. We've got Featherston to play, and Featherston, as you've rightly pointed out, make one of our rivals for that playoffs, for those playoff spots. So we've just got to look at Featherston, make sure we keep our focus, and hopefully that shows in our performance on uh, Sunday. And you've just come off the the back of the, the summer bash. What were your your thoughts on the, the summer bash as a whole, John? I think the summer bash is a great concept. Uh, obviously, it was well attended. I think our fans did a, a, a great deal with regard to that, but. It was a bit of an after the Lord's May show for us to tell the truth because yes it's a big event but believe you me it's not as big as playing Leeds in a Challenge Cup tie in front of 10,000 folk at Odsall and, and that's why I think you know the, there was a bit of after the Lord's May show there but other teams obviously picked themselves up because it was the biggest occasion of their year so far. Well, we've had a, a, what I feel was a bigger occasion. Hopefully, we've got bigger occasions to come, uh, you know, down the line. But for the minute, it's all about Featherston. And when you think about the name, the Bradford Bulls, the fact that you've you've beaten Leeds, John, do you still do you think that adds to some of the other sides like you know Bradford? There's still this this big club. Yeah, there's, there's that, but it, it's not like it was last year, mate, where, you know, it, it was really the big boys against uh, against the others and, you know, York, York really, us and York in a two-horse race, there's no way this is a two-horse race, this is an eight-horse race for five spots and you can say two of the spots have already gone with Toronto and Toulouse, so, you know, it, it then becomes six for three. Well, that's a tough old league to be, mini league to be in, but that's what we're in and we're relishing that. And, and just finally, John, we've just gone past the, the halfway point of the season. How would you evaluate the, the first half? I think it's been a real good season. There's no doubt about that. You know, we came back to consolidating the championship. I feel we're doing that. Uh, and by doing that, we're giving ourselves a, an outside chance of the playoffs. And obviously, this cup run's been fantastic as well. So, you know, I think the players can feel very proud of, of their efforts, especially when you put it into the context of the injury list that we've had. And, uh, you know, to, to be in the position we're in at the halfway mark with the injuries that we've had, I'm absolutely delighted with what the players have contributed.